ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I wonder how many of the folks who listen to Lum and Abner know what a good source of calcium and phosphorus Horlicks is. These are elements, science tells us, that are so essential for the proper development of teeth. That's why so many dentists recommend Horlicks for growing youngsters. Now, sound teeth, you know, play an important part in the health of growing children. So be sure that your children's teeth get proper attention. By that, I mean two things. First, of course, take them to the dentist regularly. There's no substitute for that. Second, make sure their diet contains plenty of the elements that I just mentioned. In other words, just let them drink plenty of Horlicks malted milk. They love the taste. And it works wonders in the development of good, sound tea. You can get Horlicks, you know, at your favorite druggists in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Here, yeah, Lum and Abner are forced to move their circus to a new location, as the attendance in Pine Ridge is so small that they're not making expenses. <laughs> so they plan to open at the county seat the last of this week if they can raise enough money to have the show moved. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Grandpappy Spears in charge of the Jotham Down store. Abner has just entered. Listen. Oh, Lum ain't been down all morning, Abner. He don't stay around the store much no more, you know. Yeah, well, I wish I could find him. I want to get that three dollars from him. Three dollars. Yeah, I bought a pair of spectacles from that feller selling them over at the circus ground, and yesterday while Lum taking them away from me. Uh, I'm going to make him pay you for them, huh? Why, no, he's going to take them back to that feller and make him give him a money back. Claimed he was a fake. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, Abner, if Lum ain't right about it, too. That feller more than likely took you into buying them when you never needed them. Yeah, that's what Lum said. Said he's going to make a... Give him my money back, and then he's going to run him clean off in the circus ground. Yeah, that's just what he ought to did, too. Well, I hope I can get that $3. I hate to be out $6 on the deal. $6? Yeah. Don't you said that glasses just cost you 3 Well, they did. Well, you're just out $3, then. Why, no. The way the thing stands now, I'm out a pair of $3 spectacles, and then I'm out the $3 I give for them. That's $6 any way you look at it. Well, now, wait a minute. Let's see here. Don't sound just right for some reason or other. Yeah, well, now, that's a bargain at that, Grandpa. The feller claimed that they was $5 spectacles. And if they are, well, I'm out $8. Yeah, that's just the trouble dealing with a stranger that way, Abner. Everybody never knows what he's getting himself into. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he might have just told me that. They might have been $10 spectacles. And if they are, well, I'm out $13. Well, I wouldn't look at the worst side of it, Abner. Might be they're just dollar spectacles to start with. And if they was, well, you ain't out for $4. Well, I, I hope so. I hope you're right, Grandpa. For if them was $100 spectacles, well, I'm roaring, just plum roaring. Dad, blame that feller anyway. Wait a minute, I believe that's Lum coming up out yonder now, Abner. Yeah, yeah, good. I want to get this thing settled. I've just worried myself to pieces over it. Well, yeah, Lum will have it all straightened out for you. You know when you run that feller out of town, he got the money for you, done it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Lum was a good one to handle it for me. <laughs> hey, well, howdy, Lum. Yeah, come in, Lum. You're just the feller I'm wanting to see. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Uh, did you get my money back from that feller? Did I do what? For them spectacles that you're taking back for me, did you make him give me my money back? Oh, uh, why, uh, well, uh, no, Abner, I, uh, well, I went over there and had a talk with him. Here. Huh? Yeah, I brung them back for you. Brung them back? Now, I don't believe you tried them long enough, Abner. You can't tell nothing about a pair of specs the first day you wear them. Your eyes have got to get used to them, sort of. Here, wear them a while. If they ain't just right then, you can go back and get your money back. Ain't plenty of time. Yeah, but I thought he was a fake. Well, I don't know where you got such ideas at in your head. You oughtn't ever accuse anybody of being a fake, Abner, unless you know what you're talking about. No. You've got to learn to trust folks, have confidence in your fellow man, in your neighbor. Well, he ain't my neighbor, Lum. He don't even live here. Well, now, you wear them specs for a few days, and if they don't work out right, well, you can always change them. Yeah, but it's too late now, and him done left town. When did he leave town? Well, you said yesterday you was going to run him out of town. Oh, well, yeah, but, well, I got to talking to him. That fellow knows a heap more about fitting spectacles than I already did. Well, I told you that he was a good octopus and you wouldn't believe me. Yeah, I told him we was proud to have a man like him in the community. Yeah. Is he going to locate here, Lum? 
No, no, he's traveling with the circus. I know he said yesterday he was going with them when they moved into the county seat. Yeah, I heard him. Uh-huh. I'd sort of like to have him look my old eyes over and see if I need a new set. A new set of eyes? No, no, a new set of glasses. I've oh. been wearing these things for 20 years. Well. Well, I'd sure go down there and talk to him, Grandpap. He does no spectacles. Yeah, I'll slip off down there directly and have him examine me. Oh, he's a genus, that fella is. Yes, sir. He can just stand there and look at your Grandpap and just tell you what you're supposed to wear. Well. Of course, uh, these I'm wearing ain't got set to my eyes good yet. Everything looks sort of blurry to me. Uh-huh. And I'm just glad that you never swap back with him, Mom. I think in time I can learn to see through these nearly as good as I could my old ones. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, when I come over, sir, uh, I've got some prices here on uh, what it's going to cost us to get that circus hauled into the county seat. Well, I thought Squire Skimp was going to tend to that firm. Well, Abner, if you want anything did right, you've got to do it yourself. Yeah. That is, some of it. Squire don't know nothing about business. He just spends money in promiscuous. He don't care nothing about what nothing costs. There ain't nothing out of his pockets, you know. No. Recollect, this is our money we're spending. Well, I never meant nothing by it, Mom. I just said that I thought Squire was going to look after first. That's all I said. No, you see, I've got out here myself and got a lot of fellas bidding again one another on it. You get all their prices and then hire the cheapest one. Uh-huh. Uh, who's got the lowest price? Well, I ain't done yet. I got one more feller to see. Yeah. Just happened to think a while ago Walter Bates' sawmill shut down, and might get that logging crew of his to move us in there. Yeah, yeah. Might could catch Walter at home today. Yeah, my, it's over. No, no, you're more than like to find Walter down about Moe's Moose Barbershop. Or I seen his woman out planting the garden when I come by that place this morning. And I know he wouldn't hang around the house and that's going on. No. <laughs> yeah, if he's planting garden, he ain't home. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll call up the barbershop. Okay. Oh. Yeah, if Walter shut down over at the mill, why, he ought to be glad to get them mules to work in there, just standing up there in the lot, eating their heads off. Hello? Mose? That's what I'd do. I'd do my... Uh, is Walter Bates there? Walter, fine. Uh-huh. I'd love to talk to him a minute, please. Huh? Any spectacle at a thing, Grandpa? Well, about three <laughs> pounds. All right. right. <laughs> He said he was glad a call. Said Walt's been asleep there in a the chair for over an hour. Well, <laughs> yeah, them loafers down there is a nuisance. Going to sleep in a chair that way. They get to sleep, and Moles can't wake them up. I had to let Moles shave me sitting in the shine chair Saturday. Uncle Henry Lumsford dropped off to sleep there in a barber chair, and Moles couldn't wake him up. Yeah. Must be having the same trouble with Walt. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> Hello, Walt. Uh, this is Lum Eddard's talk. I'm going to fit Elizabeth and Pearl up the pair. Yeah, I wanted to see you about doing a little hauling for us. Uh, yeah, well, I figured as long as your teams was laying off not doing nothing, Mike could get you to haul that circus of ours into the county seat for us. Uh, oh, I don't know, ought to be 12, 15 good loads. Uh, well, I've got some mighty good prices on it, but if you can beat them, the job's yours. Why, sure, naturally. You want to get started right early in the morning, if good. Yeah, I ought to get up. Oh, yeah, Squire wants to parade the streets in there at the county seat before noon. Oh, ain't nothing to be feared of, uh, Walt. They're all in cages. They can't hurt nobody. Well, just a flat price on the whole job. How much? All right, I grant it's a deal, then. Now, if you come over there to the circus grounds this afternoon, I'll show you what all's got to be did. Yeah. All right, Walt. Howdy call, howdy call, goodbye. <laughs> and Granny said it was a good idea calling him $40 for moving a whole circus. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. $40 is a lot of money, Mom. Yeah, but look at here at these other prices I got here. Wait a minute. Let me slip my specs on. Well, for the lamb's sake. <laughs> yeah, I never know you took to wearing glasses, Mom. Why, no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had to get them. In fact, my eyes is in such bad shape. Uh, he said this morning, it's a uh, wonder I never ruined my health. Well, I do know. <laughs> Here you joshing me about buying a pair of them down there, and then you went and got yourself fitted. Well, he said I ought to been wearing them about 20 years ago. That's what's caused my asthma, he said. Uh-huh. Yes, sir, they're right be coming to you, Lum, I'll say that. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, here's them figures. Yeah, well, wait a minute. Let me get my spectacles off here so as I can see them. Get them all? Yeah. Can't you see them letters? They're big as boxcars. I don't I know how come they're right so big. These glasses must sort of magnify stuff, though. Oh, yeah, I can see the figures now with my glasses on, but getting right down here close to it, getting right again the paper. That's good. Better to use them if you can. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute, here comes somebody. Where? 
I don't see nobody. Who is it? I don't know. I never seen him before. Must be some giant squires hard for their circus. Look at the size of that car. Well, I can't see nobody. Uh, yeah, Cedric, we know who it is. What's the matter with you fellas anyway? Cedric! Look out where you're going, Cedric. What are you trying to do? Run over a fella? Yeah, he ain't about to run over you long. He's cleaning up the front of the store. Come in, Cedric. Yeah, uh, howdy, Cedric, wherever you are. Uh, howdy, fella. I thought you was way off yet. <laughs> who are you? Who are we? What's the matter with you? Here, let me get these specs off. Looks like you're fixing to step right on me here. Well, I still don't see him. What's the matter with you, Cedric? What you feeling your way around that way for? Oh, that fella down there at the circus ground showed me some new spectacles a while ago. I can't see where I'm going. <laughs> well, things are certainly looking different to our old friends in Pine Ridge now, whether, whether they're any better or not. Ladies and gentlemen, the next scene takes place in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Fred Smith has just run up against his old friend, Bert Martin. Apparently, they haven't met for weeks. Listen. Well, if it isn't Bert. Hello, Fred. How's the boy? Pretty good. How's yourself? Can't complain. When did you get in town? Oh, we're living here. Yeah? Where? Down the street, 822. Fine. Then why don't you come up and see us? That's a be tickled to death. Well, we'd like to, Bert. Good. So, how's Peggy, by the way? Peggy? Oh, she's all right. She's putting on too much weight, though. No, I can't understand it. Peggy? That? I can't believe it. Well, it's true. Isn't Madge? Madge? Not a bit. I thought of that. That's what you think. She's just lucky. Oh, no, she didn't. I tipped her off to something, Fred. What? A plan to keep her weight down. What sort of a plan? It's called the Horlick Weight Control Plan. Well, how does it work? Well, she just drinks Horlick's malted milk every day in place of a big heavy lunch. That helps, eh? You bet it does. And safely, too. She's never sick. Hasn't gained a pound in months, either. Sounds like quite a plan. It sure is. I use it, too. We'll tell you more about it when you come and see it. There's very little more to tell, folks. The Horlick weight control is essentially simple, and that's why it's so safe. All you have to do is to drink a glass full of Horlick's malted milk in place of a big, heavy lunch. There's sufficient nourishment, you know, in Horlick's itself to keep you going. Get a package and start the plan right away. You can get it, you know, at your favorite druggist's in either chocolate or natural flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horley, who now bid you all good night and good health.